You hear me, Richard? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, good. Sorry for the inconvenience, man, but I got to make sure people do what they do in this house. Oh, yeah. What up, what up, what up, everybody? It's your boy J Real at the Real Hip Hop Show, where hip hop is everything and everything is hip hop. Y'all already know how we do it, man. We either playing some music or we talking about some music or whatever, anything that's involving hip hop. And speaking of which, you know what I mean, involving hip hop, I got two very special guests with me tonight. You know what I mean? The homeboys, the big homies. I like to call them the big homies. You know what I mean? Rick Boss and Richard Garcia. You know what I mean? What up, what up, what up? What up, West Coast? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? All right. Good evening, West Coast. Ricky the Boss. God bless y'all. God bless. I appreciate y'all for stopping through. Yeah, thank you. It's much appreciated, man. Thank you. Yeah, with with everything y'all got going on, you know what I mean? I know y'all some very busy guys, you know what I mean? So, again, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all. Thank you for having us, man. Appreciate you for having us. Oh yeah! Thank you for having us as a guest on your show, man. Much appreciative. Oh yeah, always, man, always. Now, the you know what I'm saying to go ahead and get you know get right into everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got my homeboy Rick Boss. You know what I mean? And Richard Garcia up here tonight. I want y'all to introduce yourselves for the people. You know what I mean? Rick Boss, aka OG Dev, musician, actor, screenwriter for the new movie Tupac: The Great Escape from UMC coming out soon, cinema wise. No doubt. And Rich? Yeah, my my name is Richard Garcia. I'm that guy that looks a lot like Tupac Shakur. God bless him. And God bless the Phoenix Shakur. May he rest in peace. Um, I'm a substitute teacher, an actor, uh, basically a, a, a produce worker in a supermarket. I basically, I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, but I love, I love to dibble and dabble in acting, so... Mm-hmm. That's understandable right there. You know what I mean? Now, um, you know what I mean? Just just give people a little background on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, how Rick, how'd you get started in the industry and everything? And cause you know, you know, for me and you talking, I see how you down with DPG and you know what I'm saying, and being involved in, in on the inside of hip hop. You know what I mean? So how'd you get started? Okay. Yeah, I okay, the first uh, way how I got started was back in nineteen eighty six. I first started playing trumpet instruments, then I wrote my first rap. Also, back in 1986, that the crew, or you should say the group that influenced me to to write rap music, you won't believe this. It wasn't Run DMC. It wasn't LL Cool J. It was the Beastie Boys. When I heard that song, Brass Monkey, Paul Revere, I mean, No Sleep Till Brooklyn, that's when I began to want to start writing raps and get into the rap game slowly. So So, uh, about me hanging out with DPG and all that, that came out on a later date when I met the homie Cocaine. Oh, okay, so you so you started out, you know what I'm saying, like you said, listening to the Beastie Boys. That's that's kind of cool because I know a lot of people don't really, you know what I'm saying. I don't think a lot of people know about the Beastie Boys. But um, so how'd you how'd you um, you know, like meet DPG? Like how did that go? You know what I mean? Okay, I'll tell you exactly how it first started. First of all, before I started getting into music, I was gang banging a lot and out there in California. I have family in Long Beach, Arizona, down south from Cali, down from LA. Um, I used to go to the studio all the time, meet G Money from Thug Life and uh, all the rest of the Death Row members, but I was real young. I wasn't into music at that time. I was more putting it on the set and stuff like that. But as I got older and I met Cocaine, he told me to meet him at Goldie Lokes house and Trey D's uh, apartment in Montclair, which is not far from Snoopy. We call him Snoopy because his gang affiliation is Snoopy, not Snoop. Right. Snoop is for the uh, public, but anybody that knows him, you'll call him Snoopy. But anyways, I'm not going to disrespect him. I'm going to say Snoop. So we were down at Montclair's house, and um, <clears throat> Cocaine and Lady of Rage pulled up in a Porsche. I met Cocaine. He told me, look, man, this shit's funky. Boom, get involved if you want. Later down the line, he wanted me to get into Buddy Boy Entertainment. I was going to get into Buddy Boy Entertainment. He accepted me. The Buddy Boy Entertainment family respected me coming in. But the problem is, at that time, my father was dying, and I did not take that route of Buddy Boy Entertainment, so I started going solo on my own and just hanging out more with, you know, Goldie, j Row from the Alcoholics, just a grip of people that hang out with the dog pound and shit like that, and I just started just hanging out more and more, and then meeting uh, Snoop's manager, Big Percy, uh, Red Grant, the actor Red Grant from uh, American Hustle with Cat Williams, 
just the list goes on, man. I just met a lot of people, just changed my life a little bit, and now I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, that's that's what's up, man. That's real good. You know what I mean? We need more, you know what I'm saying, positive people like that, especially with everything that's going on out here in the world now. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I'm sure. Oh yeah, most definitely. And Rich, you know what I mean? How you? How did you get involved in you know, uh, like pers- like playing Tupac? You know what I'm saying? Like, and because you perform like Tupac songs and stuff too, right? Yeah, I, I, I um, a lot of people they reach out to they re- they reach out to me through GigSalad.com. That that's a uh, like a celebrity impersonator slash tribute artist website mm-hmm. that people go to Gig Salad. And dot com, and they go like get Michael Jackson impersonated. So um, I've been working on set. I was doing some background work for Comedy Central, and I met a Michael Jackson lookalike, and he was like, "Listen, well, you should, you know, get on Get Salad, boom." But the Tupac thing is, it's, it's kind of weird how it happened with me because I met his parents. Oh, so it, 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 yeah, it's like it's like I look like I look like Pac. We got the same birthday. I was born on June 16th, just like him. Jim, but he Jim was in 1971. Yeah, Gemini. <laughs> and and the thing is, I met his father because I live out here in Jersey City on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Mary, can you stop that, please? I can't hear you. Um, I live over here on the East Coast in Jersey City, and his father, his biological father, works out here. And um, I met him at a supermarket that I used to work for. Um, that had folded. So what happened was, uh, after meeting um, Bill Garland, Tupac Shakur, his uh, biological father, I had, uh, my wife had taken me to go meet a female Shakur on my birthday in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, that's so cool. I had went out to yeah, I had went out to Stone Mountain in uh, in Stone Mountain, Georgia, uh, where the Tupac the Shakur Foundation School was at. Um, the Tupac Amaru Shakur Foundation, T A S F, and that also folded after Afini had uh, prior for her passing. But um, I, I had got the chance to meet and speak to Afini, and she told me that she seen me doing, you know, projects in the future. You know what I'm saying? But at, at the time, things were things weren't looking so good with her and uh, and her people. You know, with the film and, and all the other stuff with the movie. With all but with all eyes on me, film. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, she told me, she said, try to stay away from, stay clear from that, you know, because already people got their they hands on it. So she was like, but I see you in the future doing your thing. And I see you, you know what I'm saying, um, portraying my son in a, in a good light. Because, you know, uh, she saw, she had got to meet my wife and stuff like that. She told me had, I had told her that my wife didn't know who Tupac Shakur was. Oh. My wife is from Egypt. We had, we had met in college. Okay. Yeah, I, I I I was a high school dropout, but I had went back, got my GED, then I went through, got my my associate's degree, then I got my bachelor's of science in biology from NJCU, and you know, I, it's like I, I you know, and, and through all this, I'm a father of seven. Yeah. You understand? So, I you know, what I'm saying against all odds, you know, what I'm saying like Pac said, against all odds, you have to take care of your own. So I always raised my own. I always made it my business to be in my children's life. Thank God, you know what I'm saying, they, they, they made out good, you know. Now, now, now I'm actually going to be a grandfather for the second time. It's crazy. You know, uh, I, I, feel like a young, I feel like a young man being, you know, revitalized with these little kids. But I'm, I'm a substitute teacher, so I'm always working, you know what I'm saying. I, you know, I, I work, I work with, with children pre-K to 12 and uh, basically middle school and, um, and high school students, and you know, I, I try to bring the real and the positive side of Tupac Shakur. Right. And uh, above all, you know, what I'm saying, uh, meeting Tupac Shakur, I met beautiful people like Rick Boss. I met people like Leila Steinberg. I met people like uh, Charlie Murphy. May he rest in peace. Right. And he gave me a lot of um, uh, insight about the industry. He gave me a lot of, um, you know, advice about, you know, what I'm saying how to, you know, basically evolve. And, you know, like, like I told Spice One, I recently met Spice One. Shout out to Spice One out over there in, in, in Vegas, too. No doubt. If you're listening. And, and my man Cam Shaw is another rapper that I had met um, on the West Coast that put me down. And Shiv Knight Jr. and all those the, uh, all those cats on the West Coast. God bless you, Little Easy and all them. Uh, Cypress Hill. But the thing is this, like I, try to tell my, I told my students today, I told them this. 
Imagine that you're in the future, mm-hmm. you're an adult, and then you meet Cardi B or you meet somebody that you like, like Drake, and you're basically working or you're basically, you know, doing something with them or, and, you know, you, you know, you're just doing a project and they're they're involved. You know what I'm saying? And the younger audience don't know who they really are. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, and it's basically the, the evolution of hip hop and. I basically uh, go out to um, different colleges and I speak too, you know what I'm saying? I go to my alma mater, Hudson County Community College, my first college. And I always go back and I, you know what I'm saying? I get my time and I speak to the, to the new recruits, all the new freshmen and sophomores going to college. We talk about hip hop and education and how important it's really needed for these children to educate their minds. So when they do write and when they do read, they have the vocabulary, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and yeah. the linguistics, the, you know. Oh, yeah. Most so it's pretty, it's pretty fun, man, definitely. I mean, I, I feel blessed, you know, and I, um, I, I recently was hanging out with Tupac's, um, yeah, now, now Tupac's stepfather, uh, Dr. Matulu Shakur, uh, an original Black Panther, and that's basically how um, me and Rick Boss uh, basically elaborated because... His father, when he rests in peace, was a Black Panther, and Dr. Yep. Matulu and Dr. Matulu Shakur mm-hmm. is Tupac's stepfather, and basically he was his, uh, like my stepfather, he was his his, his professor, his his guide, and um, and I spoke to Tupac Shakur's half brother, um, Tyrone Shakur, mm-hmm. um, Matulu's youngest son, and um, you know we spoke, and you know uh, we're trying to get Dr. Matulu Shakur free because um, in the past. If you were given, uh, let's say, 20 years or 30 years right. for each day that you you do, you would you would serve two, you would serve double. So they so if I gave you 20 years, you would be out in 10. Mm. So if they gave him 60 years, if he served 30, he should be out. But right now he's going into 35 years, and they don't want to free him. Oh wow! You know, and but but yeah, so it, it you know what I'm saying so and and, and, I, and I constantly write Dr. Matulu Shakur because. I, even though he's incarcerated, he's to me. I don't believe he belongs there anymore. He served his time. True indeed. You know, uh, uh, but you know, you you know the, the the world we live in. That's just basically how we have to do. We have to like keep each other's spirits up. So I encourage people to write our brothers incarcerated. I encourage people to take time to you know forgive and and, and write your feelings out and send cards and. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody takes time to, you know, write people incarcerated. True. And 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 aside of all that, I'm also working recently. I want to give a shout out to Kristen Parkis and Northside uh, from the Outlaws. Oh, and the Outlaws, I love you, Outlaws. Love you. you know what I'm saying? No rest, rest in peace. Uh, we saying fatal. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, rest in peace. But uh, I, I just want to um, uh, give a shout out to Kristen Parkis. And, and, and William Lee Singh, Tupac's cousin, William Lee Singh, we recently, they recently mm-hmm. put together a nonprofit organization for children with special needs. So they, they collect um, donations in the name of Tupac and Afini Shakur. And you can go over and, you know, and, and, and send it. It's called sparkthebrain.com. Okay. And if people would give donations to sparkthebrain.com and what they basically do is they take the money and they go and um, go to different they have a raffle and they go to different states and they present the, the the check to parents who are living with children with special needs mainly autism and cerebral palsy why do i knew this because why do i do this because i have a daughter with autism and she's 20 years old and she graduated from Bayonne High School, and I'm very proud of her. Just like her twins, they both graduated. All my children, they graduated. No doubt. And I'm very proud of her, but she's autistic, and against all odds, she still graduated. And now I'm meeting so many different people in the name of Tupac and of Phoenix Shakur. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like everything's coming full circle. True indeed. You know what I'm saying? So let me. So I'm doing things for the community, and I'm working with this with this project with Rick Boss, and this is like a blessing, man. True indeed. So um, you know? so Rick, you um, you di- you directing and acting in this, or you just acting in it? Directing, acting, and wrote the damn movie. Oh, like that? no three. doubt. <laughs> so okay, that's what's up, man. So how how did you um like get this started? You know what I mean? Like, what made you decide to okay, I'm going to write uh this movie about Tupac. 
And if, also, I also want you to explain to people what this movie is. Tupac, The Great Escape from UMC. Explain that to people. Okay, first let me explain why I wanted to write the movie. I wanted to write the movie because I got tired of looking at people on YouTube saying that the man's dead and the man's alive. I'm tired of hearing the gossip back and forth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> say, that, say that one more time. I'm getting tired of people on YouTube saying that the man is dead and then they're saying that he's alive. The gossip going back and forth, back right. and forth for so many years. It's, not, it's time to break it down to the nitty gritty. Right. I mean, LT did a good job. I respect LT Hutton. He did a great job, but we all know what Pac did with Digital Underground. This is the time now for the public to know what happened after he got shot. Oh, because after he got shot. Past, past the supposedly funeral. You know what I'm saying? Now it's time for the world to know what really fucking happened. Excuse my language. I don't know if I'm no, supposed no, to No, no, no. You're good. You can say whatever bitch. you want. Say whatever you want. It's the real hip-hop show. We curse. Fuck shit, bitch. All of it. Say what you feel. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it after I release this movie anybody who thinks they can beat this movie mm -hmm. won't be able to because I have so much information by my family being Black Panthers and shit undercover fucking information mm -hmm. all kinds of shit that's gonna be released and I'm gonna trick the public mm -hmm. so respect me when I trick you when I say it's gonna come out on one date but it's really gonna come out another date so the police can't interfere and try to stop the movie there's a lot of information that's on that movie. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, so, most definitely. It's time for the world to know what's really going on. And enough is enough of the back and forth bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, and you asked another question. Why is it called Escape from UMC? Okay. Yes. It's very simple. Look at the movie poster. There's two clues on that movie poster if you pay close attention. One is my friend Benny Bling. Shout out to Benny Bling, uh, relative to Bruce Lee, the late Bruce Lee. He's the one wearing the hat in the poster. Right there. Yeah. That yeah. is a new Mexico. That is a new Mexico symbol on the hat. Okay. Okay. Escape from UNC. Escape from UNC means there's only one way you can get out. Actually, from UNC, you have to take a helicopter. All right, which is on top of the UNC hospital. That's how. It, and the, and the, the only company that will actually fly you out to another state is called Sundance Tours, which will fly you to New Mexico or Arizona for a certain fee with a private helicopter driver. But I don't, want to, I don't want to explain too much about right. what's going on with this movie. Right. You know I mean, I, I want the public to be ready. You know what I mean? So I want the public to be ready. Enough of the bullshit. It's True. time. True. It's time for the world to know what the fuck is going on. It's coming out. So what role do you play you in the movie? Like, I am as, the as far protector as you're of Tupac. Part. I am the protector of Tupac. I'm the one that bodyguards him. I'm the one that has that protects and saves his life on Kobo and Flamingo from getting shot. Mm. The only thing he gets shot in is a hand wound. So I'm the I'm the one that protects him all the way and shoot it out with Cointel Pro on, on Flamingo Kobo past midnight. You hear what I'm saying? With the rest of the Black Panthers to save Tupac's life to yeah. get him out of the situation that he was in. But the thing is. In the BMW, I want to talk too much about it. Right. There's somebody in the back seat, or there's somebody in the back seat, and there's somebody in the front seat. Mm -hmm. Doing the front seat, this is where I'm going to cut this conversation off. Mm -hmm. Doing the front seat is Devin Clark, the man who was dying of HIV, which was Pox double and all above the rim. Mm -hmm. Okay? He was dying of HIV anyways. So, took one for the team. But I'm not going to keep talking about the movie because that gives it away. Sure, so, we're going to let the public decide. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So it, it sounds good. It sounds it sounds interesting, man. I'm 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 excited. You know what I mean? Because you know, with me being a big Tupac fan and all, I really want to see. And um, I got a go ahead. But, hold on, this movie is not like uh, we ain't got time to film Pac with Jada Pinkett. Right. We ain't got time like that. This movie is drama and very fucking violent. Ooh. Because we're gonna we're gonna break it down how it really went down. None of this fucking poem bullshit. So, you know what I'm saying? Fucking the real violent shit, how he had to save his life to get the fuck out of Dodge. From his, and his, you know what I'm saying? And it started from when he got shot like, around that era, right? Around that era, uh, time. Yeah, but the Black Panthers already knew what was going down. Just like how the cops have people that spy on us, mm -hmm. we have people that spy on us to this day. If you ever want to know anything about the Black Panther Party, Black Liberation Army, you can go to your local library, go on YouTube.com. You can type this one if you want. Ku Klux Klan versus the Black Panthers. Mm. Type that motherfucker. You damn right. <laughs> you know you damn mean? right. You can see because you can see what's really going on. Oh yeah, most you know definitely. I mean? So that's what. Yeah. But now, now, I chose 
Rich, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. I chose Richard, I chose Richard for one reason because first of all he looks like Pot. Mm -hmm. He's got the motivation. And he's got the soul that I'm looking for that he, he that he can do what that needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? He can bring it to the cinema. This is why I chose him. Because I looked at other pot lookalikes. Mm -hmm. They may sing the song, but they ain't got no soul in them, no get up. Mm -hmm. And Richard got it. So this is why I chose Richard, because he's one of the realest motherfuckers that I've seen that's ready to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and take his time to come out from all the way from where he's at, all the way to where I'm at. Didn't get enough sleep. Fucking doing what he's doing to make this shit to keep the legacy alive, and that's what we're gonna do. No, you know doubt. what I'm saying? No doubt. Fuck with everybody. Thank you. Else. Right. Thank you. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? Most definitely. Yeah. Most. I definitely. can't afford. I can't afford the cops to try to stop this movie because the information that's in there. They're gonna try. They gonna go to the fucking movie association and try to stop that shit. It ain't gonna work because I'm gonna come out with two fake ass dates on that ass. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> no doubt. It is. It is. No doubt. Yeah, that's what basically, man. Oh, that's what's up for sure, man. So, yo, I'm telling you, man, you got, you really got my mind going, man. People really gonna want to see what's going on with this. But um, so um, uh, Richard, how do you um mentally prepare? You know what I mean to play Tupac. You know what I mean because with you playing Tupac, you know everybody gonna expect. You know what the people gonna expect a lot playing playing Tupac of all people. You know what I mean. So, how do you yeah. mentally prepare, and how do you mentally prepare for the role from like a political standpoint? You know what I mean. I had, that was a question that uh, uh, Jasmine Johnson from um, something from the culture wanted to ask. Well, the, the thing is, this I was born and raised in North, so mm -hmm. it's like um, in North New Jersey, Jersey, we have to live. Yeah, yeah, North New Jersey, where I was born, it, it, it's basically like it's basically it, where I, the time I was born. It was basically hard driven. You understand? Indeed. A lot of you know um, low poverty. So I, you know, what I'm saying welfare. My mother raised me on welfare. You know, what I'm saying my father was a crackhead. Man, he rest in peace. He was on heroin and all that other shit. No doubt. And um, you know, what I'm saying, but he got through, and, and then he, you know, died of cancer. You know, and, and, and cancer. You know that that shit blew my mind. So, you know, what I'm saying it's like. Walking through the concrete jun jungle and being raised in Newark and then uh, going from place to place with my mother. My mother, used, she, she she was a battered woman from my father when he was on his early drugs and shit. So we was always going from Philadelphia to Camden, back to, to Jersey City, uh, I mean to Irvington, back to, you know, back to Newark and shit. Mm -hmm. And these are all rough areas. You know what I'm saying? Essex County and Hudson County. Mm -hmm. And we basically ended up in Jersey City. And Jersey City is basically my home. And I love it over here. And I still go to North and Irvington and Orange and East Orange. I check it all out. Camden, I show love. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's like this. It's like being a Jersey boy and then I'm Puerto Rican. All right. So um, I'm Hispanic. Puerto Ricans are basically black and Indian. All right. If you do, if you do the the the, the lineage, the linear um, history, right? But what I'm trying to get at is this: Tupac basically was like a big brother to me all my life when I was list, li listening to Tupac. So you know, I, I I'm a Gemini, and being being born June 16th, like him, it's like we have this parallel life. Just like he was raised by a single mother, I was raised by a single mother. Just like he had a stepfather, I had a stepfather. You know what I'm saying? It's like being brought up in 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 a thug life mentality in the environment. You know what I'm saying? With a mother that's basically on your back and trying to keep you off the street without you know what I'm saying without getting shot or getting the police on you. You know what I'm saying? She did a good job. And I basically put that on my on my seven children. You know what I'm saying? I thank God that my children grew up and, you know what I'm saying, and I'm still alive. I, I thank God, you know, praise God all the time. And um, I just, Tupac has a, a different kind of effect on me. And it's like, I basically, I, I walk around the street with a bandana every day. It's like, I'm always in character. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. So it's like... It, there's no, there's basically no, no, um, no, let me put on an act. Um, I, I, I'm always listening to his music. I'm always rapping his music when I'm driving, you know what I'm saying? And, and I love to perform in front of people, you know what I'm saying? I love to do, um, like, um, parties with 
kids there and I pick songs that are friendly that, you know, I know that the, the party and little kids could get along with. Fix. And you know what I'm saying? And I also talk to um, schools because since I'm a substitute teacher mm -hmm. um, for 14 years, because I have to stay flexible. So I've been, I've been traveling a lot. I've been to Las Vegas, Minnesota. Um, LA. I, I mean, I've been doing projects oh. left and right. I have something coming out. I have something coming up this year with a okay. rapper named Cam Shaw. You guys gonna have to keep an eye on that cat because he's hot. Cam Shaw. He's from. He's from Cam Shaw. K A M S H A H. Cam Shaw. Cool. Shout out Cam Shaw. But and uh, he basically got. He, he's basically putting in work. And, you know, I did a project with him that's coming out soon. I don't know when, but uh, again, you know what I'm saying? I feel blessed to even come this far. I've also worked with uh, Mr. Cheeks out in, um, in Brooklyn, New York. Mr. Cheeks and, Bro hey, love Brooklyn. I love you, Brooklyn. I love you, Queens. Because they always, you know, call me up. They say, yo, Pa, come out here and, you know, do a show for us. You know what I'm saying? They show, they show me love out here, and I feel blessed. And the East Coast, they didn't forget about Pac, you know what I'm saying? I love them for that, you know, especially where I live at, in Jersey City and Newark. I love I loved being here. And I love the fact that this year was my first visit to the to the West Coast. And I never touched down to the West Coast until this, this past August. And I love the fact that Rick Balls pulled me out in uh, July when we were filming. And we have a lot more filming to do in different locations, too, so... And did, yeah, that's right. Did y'all film on uh, Koval? I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Did you, but I'm asking, did y'all get to film on Koval, like where where he was uh, shot and everything? That is the final official movie trailer that the world is about to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what's up, right so there. Those are the official trailers, movie trailers. And that's you said that's going to be in the final movie tra uh, movie trailer. That's the final movie trailer for February two, uh, 2020. That's going to be the final one. After that, movie trailer's been seen a couple times. Mm -hmm. Boom. The movie's back for cinema. It's got to go to Dubai, though. Dubai is going to be the front, uh, first movie premiere. In Dubai. In another country. In Dubai. Mm -hmm. Second will be here in the United States, but we're also going to have a red carpet thing, too, also down here. But uh, the first showing will be up there. Second showing will be down here. I'm kind of... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm kind of uh, on the edge because I know it's gonna be a lot of motherfucking haters disputing up there. Who knows, man? They might have protesting going on when this movie come out. You I, know what I'm saying? I wouldn't doubt it because people love Tupac. They love him. You know what I mean? Yeah, they might be out there killing themselves for this shit. You know what I mean? But that's cool though. That means they believe in the cause. You know what I'm saying? I just gotta call the police. Probably tells a lot of suicides going on. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I understand how that is, man. I had a uh, I had another question. Um. From uh, from this girl named uh, Jasmine Johnson with uh, something from the culture. She wanted to know what uh branch of uh of Black Panthers are y'all affiliated with? I'm a member because of my dad, the Berkeley chapter. Oh, the Berkeley chapter. The Berkeley chapter in California. Mm -hmm. And the only <clears throat> and the only way I'm affiliated is with through is Dr. Matula Shakur, and I'm not <clears throat> I'm not affiliated with him in that way. Mm -hmm. Because I'm basically family. Indeed, it's not, it's not even um, the, the Black Panther thing. It's, it's basically family. I love the I love the Shakur family, and I met Setu once, and I recently spoke to Tyrone. He came to my house, and I know more things. But I'm constantly writing back to the Shakur, and you know, it's it's more it's more of like a family thing right now. So would you mm -hmm. would you speak would you speaking with with Setu and uh, Tupac's father and. Uh, Tupac's mother, God rest her soul. Um, with, with you speaking with them and Matula Shakur and, and everyone, so they gave you, the, you know, like in so many words, they gave you the blessing, gave y'all the blessing to make this movie and everything. So, like, how does that impact, you know, the movie and y'all playing y'all roles in the movie and stuff like that? As Asada Shakur from, from I'm not going to say where her destination, where she might be at, mm -hmm. contacted me personally and told me to roll with this. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm you, rolling with it. You got to a facade say do it. And, and, <laughs> yep. and, 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 and basically, you know what I'm saying, I'm just going with what he says. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just telling what he says, you know? So. Every, every like that you see from Masada Shakur, we and me and her already talked about this movie. She has questioned me about this movie. 
and everything is 100% legit, and we rolling with it. Nothing's stopping me. Like I said, if I got to go to jail for this fucking movie to come out, that's what's going to happen. I got to let the world know what the fuck is really going on. Enough of the bullshit, man. No doubt, and, and I don't blame you. Because I think people need to know, because like you said, there's so much rumors going on about Tupac. Is he dead? Is he alive? Uh, did he this? Is he that? And this, that, and the other. But uh, another question I wanted to also ask, Rick, is um, what do you say to people that say, um, with you being Latino and everything, are you supposed to play Pac? Can you play Tupac and stuff like that? Because, you know, with Tupac being black, you know, people would say, well, why does he get to play Tupac? He's Latino. Well, uh, you, you know what I say to that? Don't, don't, aren't we, aren't we have, aren't we about to have a black Ariel? <laughs> Indeed. Aren't we about to have a black? Aren't we about to have a black and Hispanic Spider Man? True, indeed. Yeah, so it's like you know what I'm saying. The art, it's the art. That's what I'm trying to tell people. I'm an actor. You know what I'm saying. Tony Montana is not Cuban. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. True. Chino is not Cuban. You know what I'm saying. It's a lot of things that people. You know what I'm saying. I, I, I would say it's either jealousy or hate, but you know what I'm saying. I I carry myself because, like I said, I'm a Puerto Rican. And Puerto Ricans are Taino Indians. And we are basically black and Indian. That's what we are. We are, we, 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 our heritage comes from Africa. My wife is from Egypt, you know what I'm saying? Sure, and my children, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, you don't understand. I don't, I'm not with that, 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 uh, culture, that, that, that black or uh, Hispanic thing. Cause over here on the East Coast, Puerto Ricans and blacks are the same. True. You know that, that, that's why they call that's that's why they call them PNBs, Puerto Ricans and Black PNBs. That's what they call us out here on the East Coast in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and um, basically Dominicans. You have Dominicans, you have Puerto Ricans, and Dominicans look like you know Black. But understand this: if you think about it, Dominican on the other side of Dominican, you have Haiti. Mm -hmm. Haiti is African. So we all the same, you understand? True indeed. So, you know what I'm saying? I could go through a history lesson, but I'd rather not. So what I like to tell people is uh, um, I look at it on an artistic um, view. When we do, when we when we watch films and, and we have black, um, look what they did to uh, Mary Jane in Spider-Man. Mm. Mm. Ah, is she going to cook? Mm. Ah. Yeah. You, you feel me, right? Yeah, Ma yeah. Mary Jane in Spider-Man, she's black. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's... It's a lot of things that, you know what I'm saying, people see different things, you know what I'm saying? Some people say that Tupac is light-skinned. Some people say that Tupac is dark-skinned. True. Some people say that Tupac got a brown, bronze color. You know what I'm saying? So when you see yellow, I might see pink. You know what I'm saying? So, and being a, a teacher of 14 years, you know what I'm saying, I work a lot with students. Mm -hmm. uh, being a teacher, you know what I'm saying, um, where I live in Jersey City, we, we have a different cultures living in one city and it's a small city just like north right uh, north is a big city but jersey city is a smaller city but we have a melting pot in the school system see we have arabic egyptians we have um asians we have philippines and these are different so we'll have japanese we'll have chinese we'll have korean and we'll have philippines they're all Asians, but they come from different parts of the world. And then we have Pakistani, and then we have, like my man Cam Shaw, mm -hmm. he's a Pakistani. He's a Pakistani rapper. So when he releases his, his, his stuff, he releases yeah. it on YouTube in India, in Pakistan first. And then it, their views are being seen more out there because it's a hip-hop for that culture. Do you understand? Right. But when it, makes its way, when it makes its way to the East Coast and the West Coast ears, it's a couple of months, you know, in, in, uh, in behind. So, like I try to tell people all the time is, you got to be open. You, your mind got to be open. You can't think, okay, this is black. You know, we're living in a society today where um, you have Indians and you have different Indians. You have Guyanese, you have Trinidad, you have, um, you know what I'm saying, um, Gruti, you have Grati, you have different, you have different, Indians and you have different Pakistani and they're all different cultures. They all follow different religions. So we have to learn how to respect one another, all of us, and respect life as itself. Whether you're black, white, Dominican, Cuban, Puerto Rican, Mexican, whatever you are, sure, as long as you can do your job and pull it off, 
God bless you. You know what I'm saying? That's how it should be. And, and you're going to pull this off, right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because I've seen, uh, I've seen a few of the trailers, and you know what I mean. The trailers just leave you really, really wanting to see more. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Wait till the other one come out. <laughs> oh, so y'all no, got, no, no, y'all no. got another trailer, right? Yeah. No, the third one, which is the third one, is the last, the final one. After that, the movie's ready. And the movie's coming out in, in well, I know it's coming out in twenty twenty, but do y'all have a date yet or? It's up no. to the film association. Okay. They're the ones that release the date. It could be mid or it can be ending of 2020. We don't know. It's up to them. They're the film administration. They call the shots on that. Understandable. So um, what was what was the, the, the conversation, if you could speak on it, you know what I mean? But what was the conversation like with uh, Afeni Shakur? Well, with me? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, it went like this. Uh, when I spoke to Queen Afeni, I had said to her, uh, she has, I told her, I said, um, there's a newspaper. I was giving her an envelope with a newspaper that was basically talking about me trying to go for the movie, right? This is way before, this is when Antoine Fuqua was about to do the film. This is, but this is about when he was about, this is in June of, I want to say 2010. Okay. And, um, it started raining and I, and I, she said to, she told her security, let him pass. And I had walked through the gates with my wife and my man, Taekwon Hedden. It was, it was a photographer named Taekwon Hedden, my man, Taekwon. And uh, it was a three, me, him, and my wife, we had traveled to Atlanta. And boom. So we go in there, and I'm talking to Afeni, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to go for the part of, to play your son. I said, Pac was a big inspiration of my life. And she hugged me, and we started hugging each other, and we both started crying. All right, and then it started raining on us. Now we're in Atlanta. Now, if you know anything about Atlanta, they have the Bible Belt down there. Yeah. And my and my mother is very, very, very into religion. My mom's is a Christian, and she prays real hard. She goes to church like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, so it's like, yo, Ma, where you at? I'm in church. I'm like, damn, okay. Oh, Lord, forgive me. You know oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and she's praying. My mom is praying, and she said, be careful out there. My mother is very, very, you know, scared what I do. She likes what I do, but she says she's very, you know, fearful what I do. So um, I was talking to Afeni, and then I told her, this is my wife, Mary. I said, she's from Egypt. And she said, oh, my God. She was like, my son, Tupac, wanted to marry a girl from Egypt. It was weird. You understand? Right. And then I told her, I had showed her some pictures on my phone. I said, I know Bill Garland. I had told her that I had known uh, Tupac's biological father. Right. So then um, I had showed her the picture of me, Bill, and his and, and his his daughter, Tupac's other sister, Takira Allen. She writes books. Mm. Okay? So... Yeah. Tupac has a lot of family, okay? He has a lot of family. So I, I, I was speaking to uh, I was speaking to a female like this, and she was like, wow, she looks just like her mother, Margaret. Mm -hmm. And and I remember her saying Margaret because, or Mary, because it, it was the same thing like my mom's name and my wife's name. Uh -huh. So all I, all I know is, like, we started talking, and I told her, I said, you know, I'm trying to go for the movie, and she was like, I see you get in the movie, she was like, but not the first movie. I was like, why not? She was like, the first movie is out of my hands. She was like, um, something happened and, and it's the, out of my hands right now. That's the All Eyes on Me movie, right? Yeah, I guess that she was pertaining to that movie. Oh, okay. So she said to me, she so she was like, you know, she was like, you know what? In the future, I see you doing other projects because Tupac is Tupac is hip hop. Tupac is a part of hip hop. So if they should ever make any type of movie with hip hop, they'll more likely use you in other projects. She's like, I see you doing other projects. And then my wife was, you know, and then she was telling Mary, she's like, you, you got a win in here, girl. And it was like, it was weird because she was talking to me, my wife, you know what I'm saying? And my man was there. I haven't spoken to him because he moved to Atlanta. But my man's like, Quan on head and he was there. I know he got pictures. And I'm trying to get these pictures from him. I'm trying, chasing him down to get these pictures. But um, the pictures I got, you know what I'm saying, it's got, I got probably, you know, I keep posting them, but 
I need to get those other pictures my man got. So. No doubt. But, you know, she, she told me, she's like, keep pushing it, keep doing what you're doing. She's like, I, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. She was like, keeping my son's spirit alive. She said, Richard, just make sure you keep his spirit in a good light. Keep his spirit in a good light. So, you know, let me tell you something. I got offered to do a lot of explicit, you know, pornographic films. Because I've done a, little, a lot of videos. I've done a lot of shows. Uh -huh. And I meet a lot of people. And I got offered to do a lot of different things. And I'm going to tell you this. My wife basically is a guide of sent from God because sometimes it, the money sound good if you do it. But then my wife said, if you do that, you can't have a teacher again. So it was like a sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? Right. And being a substitute teacher, it, it, it gives me the flexibility again. It gives me the flexibility to do what I like to do is work with children, work with people, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it, it's funny because I don't know if you're familiar with WWE, are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm more, okay, are you I'm more, familiar I'm with more from the WWF era, but you know what I mean? All right, now there's a new wrestling called AEW. Mm hmm it's called All Elite Wrestling. Now, one of my students named Sonny Kiss, shout out to Sonny Kiss. One of my students is now a full-time AEW wrestler. And he wrestles with, not go. his name, he, the wrestler doesn't go by Gold Dust anymore. Mm. He goes by um, uh, Cody Rhodes. I mean, yeah, no, not Cody Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes. Uh -huh. So it's like, you know, seeing, seeing, I've been teaching for like, 14 years so seeing my students progress and grow and do um positive things and knowing that i had something to do with that it makes me feel good to be a teacher and when i met um tupac's family and they see that i'm working with children you know what i'm saying in communities and i'm doing stop the violence just like them you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. that's what Pac wanted you know what i'm saying Indeed. And and I meet a lot of different Tupac, you know, lookalikes. You know, I, I, I meet a different, a lot of them. And I know Kevon Wright. Shout out to my man Kevon Wright. He's another um, Tupac tribute artist out on the West Coast. And um, you know, and, and the thing is, I'm and, and Damian Brown. I'm, I meet all these different people. And you know what? You know, oh, look at this Tupac. I'm like, listen, we don't die, we multiply. You no know what I'm saying? That that's what Pac was saying. You know what I'm saying? We have to learn how to lift one another. And that's what I'm doing, trying to lift one another. And not through giving them money, but giving them hope, giving them spirit, giving lifting their spirit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Pushing people in the right direction to work and, and, and to, like, you know, raise up themselves out of whatever situation they're in. True indeed. True indeed. Now, um, um, Rick, um, with you, you know, working with DPG and everything and, you know, being around Snoop and, and the Dog Pound and Corrupting and all them, how do they feel about, you know, the movie? Uh, Big A, which is uh, Corrupt, and Daz's manager, and, and uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Here we saw the movie poster. Shout out to Hub City Queen from Compton, the first Hispanic chick to come out on Ruthless Records out of, straight out of Compton. You know what I mean? So um, he, they, they're cool with it. They just probably want to see... Uh, the outcome of it. I bet you Snoop right now wants to see the outcome of that shit. Yeah, I know, you know I do. Because he did help LT. Yeah, he helped LT Hutton do the uh, All Eyes on Me. So, you know, he had a... Actually, they, I think they used Snoop's voice in All Eyes on Me. Yeah, they did. But, um, yeah, they did. So, I'm just I'm pretty sure just laid back, see what happens, and see what, what the public going to say. That's all it's about. True. So it's not, it's, not a, not, it's not about who's better than the next man. It's just, it's just going to see what the public thinks. You know what I mean? So basically it. But I've known a lot of cats in my time, man. I've been to Easy's house. I mean, I know J. Roll, C. Knight. I mean, Snoop's DJ, DJ Cell. I mean, I got just too many people I know that know me. I don't even remember who they are, man. <laughs> it's just been so many years, 20-some like years in this game. You know what I'm saying? So, right. so I don't know. They know They know what's up. They know the movie's coming out. They probably don't want to speak on it. You know what I say? You know what I tell Rick Boss all the time, man? I tell him like this. Listen. We have a lot of people doing their own movies on YouTube, all right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be in cinema or whether it be on um, YouTube. We all have an artistic uh, side of it, uh, you know what I'm saying, that we, we should display. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know what I'm saying, we've seen a lot of different films of Spider-Man. We have seen a lot of different actors of Superman. 
You know what I'm saying? So uh, we have seen a lot of different actors portray different, you know, I don't know if you guys ever seen Heath Ledger's movie, The, the Great Dr. Parnassus. Hmm. They, they had Heath Ledger in that movie with Colin Farrell. And that's how I envisioned the Tupac film in the beginning. I envisioned it to be different um, actors playing Tupac Shakur in a film. Not only Richard Garcia, but Kevon Wright. I, I saw, that's the type of depiction that I saw for the Tupac Shakur film. That's why I thought they were going to go, just like that, that movie, The Great Doctor Parnassus, uh-huh. with Colin Farrow and, and Heath Ledger and, and uh, Jude Law. They, the three actors played one character. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So when when and, and that's that's I kept telling my wife and my family, that's a depiction that I want truly wanted to see with a Tupac Shakur film, to show that when we don't die, we multiply. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Tupac was trying to say. When we die, we I, you know we die, our spirits don't die. We multiply. You know what I'm saying? We come back. As our, as our kin, we come back, whether it be Puerto Rican or black, you come back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, your likeliness comes back because we all leave an impression on one another. Indeed. And Tupac Shakur left a, a profound impression on so many of the young youth. People walk up to me. I don't walk around in the school with a bandana. I'm walking around like Clark Kent in the, in the suit. I wear right. a suit to school. And, 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 and people like, you know, like the... Some of the kids are like, ha ha, you look like Steve Harvey. Look at him, look like Steve Harvey. You're like, listen, I look like Steve Harvey. No, you look like Montel Williams. Like, Who's Montel Williams? They're like, you don't know Montel Williams. Like, you look like Tupac. You know, <laughs> stop playing, Mr. Garcia. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's why I try to teach my kids that you have to think positive. You know what I'm saying? You got to stop thinking negative. Because in the world that we live in right now, our education and the music industry is kind of, it's, kind of screwed up it's miscued and that's what i'm trying to tell the kids you know and they be like oh this guy got this this guy got that listen don't worry about what the next group do got worry about what you can make right you know what i'm saying try to create your own you know what i'm saying i try and i try to you know tell my students that and and, and they go back telling their parents the parents are telling me yo thanks Mr. G. i like oh you got it you know what i'm saying so i you know what i'm saying it, it, it's fun it's, it's it's a positive lifestyle that i'm living Indeed. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not out there gang banging and none of that. But, you know, even the cops in my in my town, they call me Tupac. They're like, Yo, what's up, Tupac? The cops know me. You no know doubt. what I'm saying? But they always see me. I'm always on the run. I'm always working or I'm always, you know, flying or doing this, or doing that. True indeed. Now I got one. Go ahead. No, so that's what's up. That's what I was saying. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Now I got I got one last question that I want to ask both of y'all and you know y'all can answer, you know, how y'all feel. But uh what is it that y'all want people to walk away with when they finish watching this movie? You want to answer that first or you want me to answer it, Richard? <laughs> hey, hey, I listen, listen. I just want I just want to give I just want to give my performance. That's all. I just want to give the best of my ability. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, and put my part and and, and hopefully something successful. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people, they all heard this. Like he said, everybody knows the same story. So he's putting a little twist on it. So I'd rather go with his story. A little twist, man. No doubt. That's right. But you want to know what, how, what I want? I want the public to walk out and say, fuck the police. The man is alive. Fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what <I'm> saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell I want yeah, motherfuckers sir. to come out that movie theater burning up cars and honking and shit. You know what I'm saying? Damn Stepping right. on cars, breaking windshields and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. No doubt, man. No doubt. Now, uh, before we get up out of here, you know what I mean, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you guys, you know what I mean, for taking the time out y'all busy schedule, especially with doing the movie and, and everything else that y'all doing, you know, within your personal lives and everything. But uh, let the people know where they can find y'all at, you know what I mean, your your Twitters, your your IGs, all that. Okay, my, I'll go first. Facebook, Rick DPG. Instagram, OG underscore devil underscore dog underscore pound underscore connected. Indeed. All right. All right. My, my, my Instagram is Thug Angel 12. That's T H U G A N G E L 
one two Thug Angel twelve. That's my Instagram, and my Twitter is Thug Angel eleven. T H U G A N G E L one one Thug Angel eleven. That's Twitter, and um, I want to give a shout out to Jen Jersey. She kept asking me, give a shout out, Jen Jersey, give a shout out. What's up, homegirl? No doubt. <laughs> she used to help me out with, with with a couple of shows out here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she basically hooked me up with the Y Clef Jean um, and Troy Ave um, video shoot that I did for a video called April Showers. And I basically was playing Tupac in post mortem. And um, they, they, the video had got yanked off because um, they thought it was really Tupac in the, in the film. Oh wow! In the video and they was using yeah they was using the the, the the photo without permission, but they was like no that's Richard Garcia so I had to go on TMZ. So if you go on I think it's I think it was in 2014. So if you go on uh, TMZ 2014, uh-huh. Tupac Shakur you'll see it. Um, it was crazy man. It was crazy, and um, that that kind of blew it up out of out of the sky too. And then. You know what I'm saying? Died down. And then next thing you know, I just started getting shows. And then I linked up with that Michael Jackson show. And like I said, if anybody needs me to do a show for them, you know what I'm saying? You can always uh, book me through Gig Salad. That's G-I-G-S-A-L-A-D dot com. That's Gig Salad. G-I-G Salad. S-A-L-A-D dot com. And um, they got other um, tribute artists like Lady Gaga, all, all these different people that do shows. And they also do um, original people, like people, like young young artists who want to have a platform and, you know what I'm saying, put their music out there, original music. No so doubt. if you guys want to do that too, yeah, definitely. Hey, Jay Real. Yeah. Now, for the public that want that, that the, for the public that want those features, you contact OG Deb. That's me, Rick, and DPG on Facebook. You want Corrupt, you want Daz. Now, to talk to Snoopy, you got to have 100000 for the first 10 minutes. 100000 so you guys got that kind of money? What? For the first 10 minutes? 100000 And that's first, just the first 10 minutes to speak with him? To speak with him, $100,000. Oh, yeah. you, you, you got, if they got that, holler at me. If you want features with Corrupt and all that, I'll make it all happen for you. No doubt, man. I appreciate y'all brothers stopping through, man. And the movie will be out sometime 2020, you know what I mean? And it's going to be in theaters, right? I'm ready. Yeah, be ready. All and right. after that, going straight to Blu-ray, DVD. Probably bootleg. Who knows? I don't even give a fuck if they bootleg the shit. Spread the word. Oh, you know they're going <laughs> you know you, you know, you know to bootleg it. You know they're going to bootleg it. <laughs> For real. That shit going right to show, that shit going right yeah. to show box. No doubt. I want to see that shit speaking in Spanish and everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Most all right, Jay Real. man. Again, yeah, thank you all for stopping by, honor. man. An honor to be on your show, man. God bless you. All right, man. Thanks again, y'all. All All right. Peace. Peace. Chill, y'all. That was uh, uh, Rick Boss, you know what I mean, and Richard Garcia. You know what I mean? They're going to be doing the Tupac movie, you know what I mean? And y'all give y'all feedback and what y'all think about, you know, what they're going to do with the Tupac movie. Me, personally, I'm ready to see it. You know what I mean? I always look at any... And everything that's involved in Tupac. You know what I mean? So, chill, man. It's your boy, Jay Real at the Real Hip Hop Show, where hip hop is everything and everything is hip hop. You already know how we do it, man. Y'all be on the lookout for more music to come, more interviews are coming. You know what I mean? Got another dope interview coming up real soon. You know what I mean? And of course, more music, more topics, more, 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 and more, 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 and more. You know what I mean? So, again, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my guests, you know what I'm saying? Rick Boss and Richard Garcia do your, doing their thing with the Tupac. The Great Escape from UMC. You know what I mean? Coming 2020, man. Y'all make sure y'all check it out and, you know, get y'all feedback and what y'all think about it, man. You already know, man. It's your boy, Jay Real, at the Real Hip Hop Show, where hip hop is everything and everything is hip hop. Peace. <laughs>